life cycle costing. This is a method of tracking and aggregating all actual cost and revenue of a product from its inception till it probably enters into extension. So the traditional costing system tracks the cost over a shorter period, usually a year, which makes it difficult to fully grasp the journey of the good or service. The life cycle of a product has the following benefit. One, it enables better preparation to be invested into the product since it covers the entire lifespan of the product. Every step is anticipated and catered for. So for a business to decide to produce paper bags, it has to research if there is the need for it, the appropriate price to meet the pocket of the potential customers and the right marketing strategy to draw their attention and receive patronage. This way, the product will not be ruled out and later abandoned abruptly due to unforeseen circumstances. Two, the profitability of the product, that is the amount and timing, will be rightly assessed. Thirdly, there is the opportunity to make timely interventions when need be due to the initial long-term plan. Any deviation will be spotted on time and addressed. Lastly, the life cycle has the potential of increasing the lifespan of a product, especially when necessary steps are taken and challenges addressed on time. There are the consequences of not adopting life cycle costing are one, failure of the product to meet its intended objective, reduced shelf life of the products on the market, excess inventory by producing more than the company requires, loss of profits, early entry into the market decline stage and possibly extension. Let's look at the stages of product life cycle. So here market research plays an integral role in its stage of the cycle. Every product spends a different amount of time in each stage, so there is no set time as reference. The first is market development. So here, market research commences. Activities necessary to ensure a product's successful entry to the marketplace transpires here. This includes researching for a suitable target market by way of customers, the appropriate pricing strategy to match the customer's pocket identifying the right campaign strategy to draw attention and influence their patronage, etc. At this stage, the business encounters cost only with no revenue generation. The second stage is the introduction. So here the product enters the stage when it is introduced onto the market. So marketing content at this stage focuses on building product awareness that is trumpeting the existence of the product to the reach of target customers. The functionality and uniqueness of the product must also be advertised strongly in order to draw customers to try the product. The product might draw sales from competitors. Now, sales at this stage is usually slow and might not offset the corresponding cost. So businesses should be aiming at breaking even. Some products may realize profits in some cases. The third stage is growth. If the marketing campaign at the second stage is successful and the required attention is drawn, the product now enters the stage. Here, customers have embraced the product and sales is increasing rapidly. Cost per unit will reduce as more units are absorbing the overheads, especially the fixed one. Now, this will lead to increased profits, which is usually used to offset the cost incurred in the earlier stages. The product is now in the state where competitors will be seeking to capture its share of the market, interrupting its success thereby. Marketing in this stage must deal with brand awareness, keeping customers glued to the product. To extend the product stay at this stage, it is essential for new features to be added to the product, solidifying customer relation and support services, and establish more branches. The fourth stage is maturity. So when sales hit its peak, the product is said to have entered the maturity stage. Although many customers might be using the product, there may be too many competitors. So new customers are not seeing the need to patronize the product over competing others. Marketing here must highlight the superior features of the product over substitutes. Production cost remains and sales is steady. Product improvement or differentiation are necessary 
to renew interest and to remind customers of its continuing existence. And that is going to get better. At this point, competitors would have begun taking portions of the product share of the market as they might be at their growth stage. And lastly, the decline stage. Now, when marketing fails to keep customers' interest to the product, it enters the decline stage. Here, sales begins to fall. And if care is not taken, the product will cease to exist. Some of the causes are stiffer competition. So when the product faces challenges from others for their market share, and the business is unable to drive a strong marketing campaign to keep its customers and or win new ones. Secondly, if the product becomes outdated, that is, its functionality no longer matching the trending needs of customers. Outdated products are pushed out of the market and replaced by modern, trendy, newer ones. For example, video home system, that is video cassettes, cease to exist due to the introduction of DVDs. And the DVDs also later became extinct because of the introduction of online streaming. Thirdly, loss of customers' interest. If the product is not advertised enough to keep patrons informed and their interest stimulated, they might be tempted into believing the product no longer exists. That void will be filled by competing products with strong marketing drive. Next is uncompetitive pricing, especially when other products have a better or more realistic ones. Then lastly, damaged brand reputation. So attained to a product's reputation due to expired products being sold negative customer review, scandals, etc. can all cause a product to decline. Now, if a product enters the decline stage, the business may decide to apply necessary steps to revamp or discontinue its production. Now, the following steps might be employed in revamping the product. First, introducing more lines to the product like the Coca-Cola brand did with Fanta Lemon, Fanta Cocktail to keep interest high on the Fanta brand. Pepsodent also introduced different flavors such as charcoal mint to its brand. Secondly, repackaging the product. Here, current repackaging can be tweaked to give customers refreshing new look and or feeling. The product can also be rebranded by way of a logo change or different advertisement content used. Thirdly, the product pricing strategy can be reviewed. For example, offering quantity or loyalty discount to whip customers' interest back. Also, the launch of newer versions of the product is likely to help. Apple is notorious with this, introducing upgrades to their iPhone products periodically to keep customers from getting bored. Now, deciding to totally move into producing a new product will cause it to restart the cycle. So if Coca-Cola had abandoned the Fanta brand and started producing Sprite, the Sprite product will move down to the development stage and start climbing up.